welcome back. We're going in this video to find the Galois group of Q adjoining the fourth root of 2 comma i over Q. And we do it in terms of looking at the images of the fourth root of 2 and i, which we know we can, we can do. So first, we know that the fourth root of 2 has as its minimal polynomial x to the fourth minus 2. Now in the last video we showed that x to the fourth minus 2 did have the fourth root of 2 as a root. Uh, we didn't talk about whether it was irreducible or not, but of course it is, so we know this is irreducible by Eisenstein's criterion with p equal to 2. So that's the minimal polynomial, and so we know that any Galois homomorphism is going to permute the fourth root of 2 amongst the roots of its minimal polynomial, All right? And you remember the roots we showed in the last video were going to be plus or minus the fourth root of 2 and plus or minus i times the fourth root of 2. All right, and you also have i, and i has minimal polynomial x squared plus 1, and the roots of this polynomial are plus or minus i. So we know that the Galois homomorphisms are going to permute the fourth root of 2 and all the rest of those roots of x to the fourth minus 2, and it's going to swap i and minus i. Right? maybe with each other, maybe with themselves. So, um, as we usually like to do, we're going to build some automorphisms that permute one set of roots and fix the others, and then we'll know that all of the possible automorphisms are just products of these things. So the first one we'll define is going to be a sigma. So, uh, sigma is going to have the property that when you apply the fourth root of 2 to it, well, it's going to send it to another uh, one of these roots up here, and uh, for reasons which you get a little bit by trial and error, we're going to send this to i times the fourth root of 2. All right, And again, well, I'll go back and show you why it is I picked that one of, of all the other ones. Um, and then we're going to define some tau. Oh, well, let me mention here, sigma of i is just i, right? so we let it fix the other roots. Uh, tau, that's going to fix the fourth root of 2. Um, but then when we apply to i, I'll have it swap it over to minus i. Right? If I let it be i, it'd just be the identity. Okay, so I claim from sigma and tau I can generate all of the other uh, automorphisms. So let's take a look, for example, at what happens when I square sigma. So I apply it to the fourth root of 2. So the first time I just get i times the fourth root of 2. And since sigma fixes i, this is going to be the same as i times sigma fourth root of 2, which is again i fourth root of 2. And now i times i is negative 1. So I get negative fourth root of 2. And so from here I can quickly see that the cube of sigma is going to send the fourth root of 2 to negative i times the fourth root of 2. And if I apply it a fourth time, then I'm actually going to get back the fourth root of 2. Okay, so this means that as an element of the Galois group, sigma has order 4. And you'll see, applying sigma, sigma squared, sigma cubed, and sigma to the fourth, I fix i all the time, but I get all four of the roots of x to the fourth minus two. Right. And so now, recall, I, right, there are going to be eight possibilities for Galois automorphisms. Namely, I get the four where uh, I send the fourth root of two to one of the roots of x to the fourth minus two, and then, and I fix the i, and then the other four, where I again send those roots of the fourth root of 2 to any other roots of, I mean, the roots of x to the fourth minus 2 to any other root of x to the fourth minus 2, but I send i to minus i, which just amounts to applying a tau at the end. So this tells me that the Galois group that I'm looking for is going to equal, well, you have this sigma to the fourth, right? That was the identity map, ultimately. You have the identity map, you have sigma, 
sigma squared, sigma cubed. And then you could have tau and tau sigma and tau sigma squared and tau sigma cubed. And that works out to 8 galwatt.